I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who wanna share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And I do know that, and I get notice, uh, emails and little notes from time to time about people who watch the show regularly. And I just appreciate your love and support and prayers. And uh, knowing, just knowing that these interviews that we do and the people sharing their sincere stories really do touch both Mormons and non-Mormons, hearts alike. Christians are writing in and, and indicating what, uh, what an impact this is having uh, in, their, in their lives. So I appreciate all that and really appreciate Caitlin Rosas coming, sharing your story. And it's an interesting one because you're so young mm -hmm. still, <laughs> but uh, it's got some interesting as aspects to it that I think a lot of people will relate to. So mm -hmm. you were born in the church, were you? Yeah, born in the church. Parents were married in the Jordan River Temple, I believe it was. Really? Um, was you, were you born here in, Salt, in Utah? Yeah, well, yeah, American Fork. Okay. So, um, yeah, went to church, got baptized at eight. Um, <laughs> Chima days, young women's. Just the normal kind of primary and all primary, the young stuff yeah. girls camp did you ever get to a girls camp or yeah we did yeah. that um and just kind of did the whole mormon thing yeah no coffee no r-rated movies and could you play on sunday was that allowed not really i mean yeah. it was more like playing quietly or like in the in the house in the house, in the house yeah didn't go do too much uh, extracurriculars on mm -mm. on Sunday. Monday night was family yeah and home evening. We tried to keep up with that. Yeah. A lot of times it was <laughs> family dinner and maybe like a lesson. But yeah, we it it did gets what we to could. be one of those things that you want to do better always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how many brothers and sisters did you have? Uh, two sisters. Okay. Um, they're both younger, so. Yeah. Well, now something happens along this way when you're in young women and your your dad starts uh, seeing the church a little differently. Yeah. So this is something we haven't really looked at before in a in an interview setting, kind of. So what happened to dad? Well, he, the shortest answer would probably be he like, learned something about the church or some things about the church and maybe some doctrinal or other things was this a lot of it was doctrinal yeah. um see this is i relate to this because i would have been the dad in this case although my kids were grown but i yeah. I've thought about what would happen if it had been younger so yeah the the weird the interesting thing though is that we would continue to read um the book of mormon as <clears throat> as part of our I guess family church, I guess sure. you would call it. Yeah. So we wouldn't, we had stopped going to church, but we would still have like family church and read and from study the and Book stuff. of Mormon and stuff. So we still held on to that, but we just yeah. like didn't well, go did to he, church. So. Did he kind of sit you down at some point and say, okay, uh, mom and I, or maybe mom didn't know either, and 
I think she be, knew. Did she? Yeah, and my dad did kind of sit us down at one point, and um, he didn't really tell us, like, all of kind of what was going on, but it was, yeah. you know, we don't go to church anymore. It's, We're just not sure it's true. Is that kind, kind of what sense? Um, did you go with your mom at all? I mean, or did she agree with this? She did, yeah. Oh, she did. So it was kind of like a family thing. Like, okay. all of a sudden we were able to wear, like, tank tops. We didn't have to wear, you know, the sle the sleeves anymore. We could... My dad would... <laughs> there was one point where he actually went to the liquor store and bought wine at one point. <laughs> How shocking, which yeah. it, it was, yeah, it was kind of like... Wow, this is really weird. <laughs> so breaking the word of wisdom. Yeah, right? yeah. and that's. I think it was like at eighteen or nineteen. I actually started drinking coffee, and I was still living at home at the time. And my parents were just kind of like, my dad didn't like it, but yeah. my mom was like, "Oh, this is actually pretty good." So <laughs> now she probably drinks just as much coffee as I do. But yeah. well, what? Um, and you're young at this age, you mm -hmm. were about 16, as mm -hmm. I recall. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you have a, would you think you had a testimony of the church? Had you, mm. had you prayed about it? I mean, you bore your testimony, I think you mentioned, to yeah. fast and testimony meetings and stuff. Yeah, I, w I don't know if it was like one of those, I think it was just a testimony because other people said they had a testimony and it was, kind of along the same lines that like what other people would say when they bore their testimony yeah which looking back doesn't really sound like a testimony it sounds more like a statement of allegiance kind of yeah that's a so, good way to say that how many people or how many of us do you think would bear our testimony and be kind of go, just going through the motion and mm -hmm. it's not really from the heart it's mm -mm. just it's really. We know not. the kids, uh, very young kids, but even up through maybe 16, 18, or 20, kids are still mm -hmm. kind of. And yet the church sometimes has told people, well, you just keep bearing your testimony until you get one. Yeah. Which is kind of a. Yeah. You know, and a even like talking to friends of mine, because they're like, we had lived in, the, lived in California at the time, and we're the weirdo Mormons as opposed to. <laughs> Utah where that's the norm but um even some of my friends are like so you you guys don't drink coffee you guys don't do and this you're saying or? these were Mormons in California or these were the the more like non Mormons non Mormons yeah, yeah. Okay. and so I was like well no cuz we believe this and yeah. it wasn't looking back it's almost like a recruitment kind of technique as opposed to like yeah a Christian testimony, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. They're vastly different, so. You did mention a little bit about an experience going to do baptisms for the dead. In, mm -hmm. Is that in California, too? That what was, was. What was that experience? It, it was kind of like, you know, my mom was excited because I was 12 and we can do baptisms for the dead. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I could tell you're excited, Mom, but like for me, I'm like, I guess it's not really how I want to spend a Saturday necessarily. And we had to drive like three hours to go to the L.A. Temple. Mm -hmm. So it was um, a little bit prior to that, um, some friends that went to a, like a Baptist church or something, they had asked me if I wanted to go to church with them. And... It was like a Wednesday, and I'm like, that's kind of a weird day to go to church, but, you know, whatever. So I'd asked my mom, and she was like, yeah, I mean, I'd be okay with you going, but just not that often, just, you know, mostly sticking with the true church or our <laughs> church or whatever. Yeah. And I could <clears throat> tell she really didn't want me to go, so I just decided not to go. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> during my... Uh, temple interview um oh for the to go to the baptism yeah. for the dead yeah I recommend yeah. yeah um the bishop had asked me like do you you know are you on, honest with your fellow men and of course you say 
Yes, and then do he had you, asked me do like, you associate? <clears throat> do you associate with any with any other church or whatever? And so right. I said yes because I thought, well, my friends were asking me to go to church. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said no, and I just kind of got the dad, <laughs> what are you saying? Kind of look. Yeah, and I was like. Um, I mean, no, or something like that. And he was like, oh, okay. And then just kind of like went on with like the interview. And I remember being in the temple and we're getting ready for baptisms and stuff. And I'm like, this is just, I don't feel right being here. Cause I, I don't feel like I was completely honest. Cause I, mm -hmm. obviously, I guess it was to please the bishop, not necessarily to be honest. And yeah. this just feels you didn't feel worthy or yeah. felt like a hypocrite or something, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So. Well, so what happens at, uh, at this point then at age 16? Um, well, we kind of, we'd kind of, we had moved from California back to Utah. Um, and our cousins and ex other extended family members kind of, stopped talking to us like a little bit at a time um because they they knew now you weren't attending the church right oh. and so which really sucked because i mean <laughs> my, my our cousins had been like our best friends growing up like we would go to their house on sundays and just hang out did or, your dad tell them that you were not attending anymore or how did they I find out i think so yeah <clears throat> i'm pretty sure that was why and so um yeah, so we... So your family kind of finds out and treats mm -hmm. you differently. Very differently, yeah. And everybody does that, or...? For the most part, yeah. I mean, we... I have a couple of aunts that have, you know, kind of stuck through it, and they will still go to weddings and <laughs> stuff like that. But, yeah. like, my grandma on my mom's side, she... As a kid, she would send really cool... Christmas and birthday presents. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden they stop. Oh. So I was like, that's really weird because, I mean. I'm still your granddaughter. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, I'm like 16, 17 at the time. I could go get a job and buy my own cool toys. But I mean, still, yeah. like, not getting that at least a Christmas card was. Well, that is really one of the weird. hard things that a lot of us have suffered mm -hmm. or endured, I guess. It, people that, um, gosh, friends for life, mm -hmm. even family members now don't talk to you or anything. Mm -hmm. It's almost like their relationship with us was built on yeah. on the church and mm -hmm. when they find out. Mm -hmm. But you didn't go right into Christianity yet, no. uh, did you? You kind of wandered for a few years. Yeah, so, I was, you know. for up until about a year ago, um, when I actually became a Christian, I was kind of didn't really know what I believed, but I still felt like, well, you know, Dad says the Book of Mormon is, you know, the Word of God, so... Your dad had said that, even? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if he'd said it, like, out loud, but, like, we were studying it, like, yeah. like it was the only thing to really get any spiritual food from. So you so. didn't have too much respect for the Bible, I would think. Not really, no. Yeah. How but, about Jesus, did you feel much of him either mm. as Mormon or during this transition period? He was, you know, kind of a footnote, I guess. And <laughs> the story of the cross, I just like, well, I've heard that before. Like, yeah, he goes, he dies on the cross. Okay, what next? <laughs> like, because I think... It didn't seem to mean too much. Mm -mm. Then. Yeah. And yeah, I didn't appreciate it, like, yeah. at all. And so... Um, now, would some people, you uh, know, listening to this, would they blame that on your youth, or you just think mm -hmm. that the church, and I would agree with this comment, that the church just doesn't really emphasize that part of mm -mm. of it's, the gospel or mm -mm. Of, of Jesus' life, and I mean, we, we almost think the atonement took place in the garden, yeah. and uh, yeah. I would, yeah, I would say a lot of it has to do with the church and, you know, my parents that you know we were really active in the church so it's like I didn't 
really think to question right. stuff. Right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I was, I didn't really when I was kind of in, I guess, in that in between from leaving the church and actually coming to Christ, it was, um, I would say that I, I never really stopped believing in God. He was still that. Good for you. <laughs> like, you know, if someone would take his name in vain, I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, yeah. and, but then if someone were to ask me something like, that has to do with sin or the Bible, I wouldn't really know what to say. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what, there was even a point where I was going to school at Salt Lake Community College and some gentlemen were handing out um, Gideon Bibles. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was starting to kind of... Um, question what my dad would teach and um so he was teaching kind of out of the book of mormon mm -hmm. you mean and stuff but yeah wasn't going to church but he so did he believe in joseph smith then or just yeah just the book of mormon yeah i think so but not the mainstream church huh? yeah and especially after the church built the city creek mall that, that got was him. like yeah <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people kind of looked at that and raised their eyebrows. Mm -hmm. oh, Five billion dollars or four or three, whatever it was. But yeah, really. Well, there are little things that come up, I think, in all of the members' lives that they keep having to kind of mm -hmm. look at again and wince back, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Most of people, including myself for years, just put things on the old shelf, yep. as they say, and, yep. <laughs> and put it there. So. Yeah. You probably had a few things up there too, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, when um, yeah, when they were handing out the Gideon Bibles, like yeah. I was like, oh, okay, like this is kind of cool, but it's not like King James, like so. I have to like check this out, sort of. <laughs> so, my husband and I had been married for I think a year or so at this point, and. I handed it to him and I was like, like, I know it's a Bible, but do you know, like, what this is, kind of? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's a Gideon Bible. And I was like, and he just kind of looked at it. I'm like, that's pretty cool. They were handing him out at school. I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh, and then just kind of handed it back to me. And I'm like, okay. Did, <laughs> had you ever really read the Bible or anything? Uh, not really. Like, yeah. it, it wasn't, it, it's not, <clears throat> it wasn't. Um, how it is for me today, like yeah. spiritual food, like yeah. So tell us what happened. Um, <laughs> as far as becoming a Christian, yeah, or yeah. so. Did you end up reading any of the Gideon Bible, or? Yeah, no? I did actually. So, um, I think it was about three or four years, three years ago. My dad was diagnosed with colon cancer. Oh. And I had been going to Calvary Salt Lake City Church um, for a while and, you know, heard the gospel, but it, you know, hadn't, like, sunk in. I hadn't... And how did you end up there? Or not not there particularly, but going to the... You um, said what your husband wanted to do that? and Well, no, I actually, just to kind of, like, backtrack, yeah. um, I had a roommate... Um, and she, I knew she was a Christian, and um, it had been a while since my dad had actually, I, I had actually, like, taught anything, I guess. Like, I felt like I didn't have that, like, spiritual food, I guess. Oh, yeah. And so I knew Calvary was a Christian church, okay. but I'm like, I need something and your roommate went there or invited you there or? well i had asked her and i was oh. like do you know of any like christian churches she's like yeah my dad showed me this website of this calvary church and i was like oh okay well so we started going there on sundays and it was so refreshing because like what was different just real praise i was like 
no one's sitting there, like, hmm. reverent and still, like, people are standing up, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is really cool, and... Did you like the words upon the... That was kind of weird for me, because I'm, like, looking for hymnals, <laughs> and there aren't any. No, <laughs> so... but the words are up on the mm -hmm. screens, and and what were they about? Just Jesus, I was like what <laughs> like this is such a weird concept for me because all my life it was jesus and or okay jesus was here he died he rose okay and now you know here comes joseph smith and we have this guy and this guy so i'm like yeah it's so much so different isn't it is it, it is yeah. and it was yeah i wish all mormons for a week or two could mm -hmm. experience a, a good Mm -hmm. worship service yeah and I was like this is and realize the difference yeah yeah plus they had coffee there at the yeah, church so I was enough. like okay well we'll go get coffee and then we'll go to church this is cool so yeah. um but all about Jesus it's just so mm -hmm. so fun refreshing like you yeah. said yeah yeah so and you enjoyed that and then yeah and so um I had there's something that past the pastor Terry had said was like know what you believe and why you believe it and I had never heard that before and so when my dad was diagnosed with cancer yeah. I was like I don't know what I believe and why I believe it like and it was just such a conviction where I'm like losing sleep I I just but I didn't want to let go of like the Mormon stuff because I'm like that can't be false like no. Why would they lie? That's yeah. just silly. Yeah, why would they lie? <laughs> so, um, and then Sam was just, my husband was like so patient with me. Like, he, we would have discussions and I would end up getting like so mad. Like, because I don't even remember a lot of them right off the top, but. Were you sensing that the church wasn't true? Is that part of what you were mad at? <laughs> I think or? it was that I didn't really have much of an argument for what he was saying. <laughs> okay. Because, like, um, I can't even, I can't think of well, what Well, there's some wonderful scriptures about grace in the Bible. And, and yeah. if you're really looking at them and being honest, there's just no way that Mormon, mm -hmm. Mormon doctrine can, uh, can compare to that. Exactly, or, yeah. yeah. Like... The concept of grace, I, I didn't yeah. know what that was. And yeah. So. Had you at this point heard any of the negatives of yeah. Book of Abraham and Book of Mormon and um, DNA and archaeology and, I mean, Joseph I, Smith's polygamy and all that stuff? Had you knew much about that? Um, what I heard, I thought, was just people that didn't understand the church. Yeah, like, and didn't know the, the well, real truth. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, we had gone, Sam and I had gone to Lifeway, and there was this book by Sean McCraney that kind of outlines back-to-back, -back, you know, Christianity versus Mormonism, mm -hmm. and Sam was like, we should check out this book. That and, A to Z book, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's good. And I was like, putting it off, and then finally I'm like, okay, we can go if we get a new coffee mug. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> a good deal. Yeah, I, my our cupboards are like there's so many coffee mugs it's kind of ridiculous so um we went in there and then there was at one point i think he showed me the video with your testimony and oh really he because he had actually discovered the ex-mormon files and showed it and was telling me about it and i'm like oh that's neat well that's kind of cool but you know i didn't like i was like eh, maybe i'll watch him <laughs> at some point and I remember watching the one with your testimony and I just was like, no, like, I just, I was so mad because I'm like, well, why, why do people like say it's the word of God? Like the Book of Mormon is the word of God. Like, why do people, it, it just didn't make sense to me, I guess. Yeah. And so I, I don't remember what day but at some point I was holding on to this cross necklace that Sam had gotten me and I 
was watching some of Sean McCraney's videos and just kind of learning what was going on and just everything fell away. Really? Is that kind of a born again moment for you? Yeah. And what do you mean fell away? Just all the depression, all the um, false doctrine, everything but the cross, I guess. And I remember there was, the best way I can describe it is like a light being there, I don't know, in me or mm -hmm. something like that for days. And I was sitting in my math class failing horribly and I realized there's a reason to live. Like my worth is not in this math class. Yeah. And I had my, I, I didn't know what to do with that Gideon Bible. It was just in my purse and it was still there. And I just got it out and I was reading it and didn't pay attention to a single thing my teacher was saying because I'm like, I want to know this stuff. Like, I don't care about math. All like, of a sudden the Bible just becomes something. Yeah, totally, I yeah. just, I wanted to eat it up. I'm like, learn more and more. Like, where have you been all my life? And of course it's been there. I just, we didn't just open didn't my have eyes. The eyes. Yeah. yeah, that's, so. oh, that's terrific. And I've never been the same since so and now the bible and jesus and the cross just mean so much yeah it's yeah. Yeah. and i don't think a mormon can understand that we really don't we can't get enough of mm -mm. jesus and who he is and what he did and his free gift of grace yeah yeah they they their thinking is well we have jesus but we have all this other yeah. stuff but we don't need anything more than jesus yeah, that was such a weird concept for me to grasp. Yeah. So. Okay, Lynn, our time is already gone. Can you believe that? That's fast. <laughs> well, what a wonderful, sincere story. And, you know, I think some of you out there may be having parents that are losing their faith, but uh, they're probably following a good path. We would encourage you to read the Bible as a child, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and we appreciate... Caitlin coming so much and sharing and gosh we've got a couple of minutes a couple of seconds but not anyway we appreciate <laughs> you watching and thanks Caitlin for sharing such thanks a sweet story me. see ya